Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. A basic scenario for our Exchange 2003 upgrade to Exchange 2010 is going to be if we have one Exchange 2003 server. And we may have a front-end Exchange 2003 server and a back-end Exchange 2003 server. But the concept is going to be the same, where users from outside our firewall are going to access their mailbox with RPC over HTTP or Outlook Web Access. And they're going to go to URL like mail.itdbs.com, either in their browser or they're going to open up Outlook and use RPC over HTTP. And that request is going to go through the internet, through the firewall, and hit the Exchange server. Same goes for internal users. They're going to either use Outlook Web Access or Outlook, most likely, to access their mailbox. And that request is going to go directly to the Exchange server. Also for mail delivery, external mail servers are going to make the request through the internet send the email through the firewall and send it directly to the Exchange 2003 server. Now we may have something like an SMTP gateway with Exchange 2003 that does some spam checking and maybe some antivirus so the mail servers are actually going to send the email normally to like a DMZ or a perimeter network. That email is going to hit our SMTP gateway and then the SMTP gateway is going to send the email to Exchange 2003. Now during the migration to Exchange 2010, we're going to have a coexistence of Exchange 2003 servers and Exchange 2010 servers. And in this diagram here, Exchange 01 is going to be our Exchange 2010 server, and it's going to have the hub transport, client access, and mailbox role on it. So we may have some mailboxes on our Exchange 2003 server and some mailboxes on our Exchange 2010 server. And there's going to be that routing group connector that we talked about between our Exchange 2010 server and our Exchange 2003 server. So they'll be able to pass email back and forth. And also, we'll configure our Exchange 2010 server to send email out to the internet and also receive email from mail servers on the internet. So a mail from a, another mail server is going to go through the internet to the firewall, hit our Exchange 2010 server. Our Exchange 2010 server is going to either send it to the correct Exchange 2010 mailbox server or send it over to another Exchange 2003 server and it will be routed on from there to get to the correct Exchange 2003 mailbox. Now what about something like Outlook Web Access or ActiveSync? In order for the coexistence to work properly we're actually going to configure another domain name and that's going to be legacy.itdbds.com and that's going to be used to access our Exchange 2003 server, but we're going to configure it so that the client doesn't even know about it. So we don't have to tell our users to like reconfigure their Outlook or go to a different URL to get to Outlook Web Access. They're still going to go to mail.itdvds.com in this example. That request is going to go through the internet, through the firewall. It's going to hit our Exchange 2010 client access server, and our Exchange 2010 client access server is going to know if that mailbox is on our Exchange 2010 environment, in which case they'll use Outlook Web App for Exchange 2010. But if it's on an Exchange 2003 server, it's going to redirect it automatically to legacy.itdvds.com. And the user really won't even know the difference, but they'll be using Outlook Web Access on Exchange 2003 if their mailbox is on Exchange 2003. And same goes for ActiveSync. So it's really going to be seamless to the user. Now once we've finished upgrading to Exchange 2010, a basic setup is going to look like this. Basically we've replaced our Exchange 2003 server with our Exchange 2010 server and it's going to have the hub transport client access server and mailbox server role. We may also choose to add an edge transport server and a DMZR perimeter network uh, so that our edge transport server can do things like spam checking, uh, virus checking, things like that on an email before it gets to our exchange server.